Right before Xbox's July showcase, their big showcase, Phil Spencer sits with a major publication and raises some eyebrows. Now, with that said, does his words have much impact on the future of Xbox and how it's perceived? And how should we look at Phil's words versus what they produce? Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Do me a huge favor before we get into this one, y'all. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when I'm dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the reason, and y'all know the slogan. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right, so here's the deal, y'all. Um, Right before the big July showcase... Uh, where Halo is expected to be shown heavily and some other games, first party games from Microsoft. They said a lot of them, not just first party, but I would assume some big third party games too are going to be shown near to showcase the Xbox Series X, the ninth generation console efforts from Microsoft. Um, this is a big deal for Microsoft. Big thing for them to have happened to help recapture some mind share. A lot of it, which they lost this generation with the Xbox One and its series of consoles. Um, with that said, Phil Spencer sat down with GameStar um, and he said some things that, you know, got some Xbox people even. Even got some Xbox people just, just like... Yo, what's going on here? <laughs> but let's get into it. All right. So this is coming courtesy of GameIndustry.biz. Let's do this. Let me show you something. If it'll let me. There we go. All right. Courtesy of GameIndustry.biz, the article reads, Xbox backs off Game Pass on every platform goal. Phil Spencer says that other consoles aren't really that interested in having a full Xbox experience on their hardware. Xbox hit Phil Spencer's long-stated goal to get Xbox Game Pass on every device appears to have been scaled back a bit. In an interview with GameStar published late last week, Spencer said, suggested as much in response to a question about whether the company's focus on giving gamers choice meant the Game Pass would find its way to the Switch and PlayStation 5 in the future. Quote, the thing about other gaming console platforms is we're not able to bring a full Xbox experience on this platform, Spencer said. Nothing that the company has been able to bring such an experience to PC, noting, I'm sorry, rather, that the company has been able to bring such an experience to PC and mobile phones. Quote, we know when somebody is playing one of our Xbox games that when they're doing that, there's an expectation that I've got my Xbox Live community, I have my achievements, Game Pass is an option for me, my first party library is completely there, Spencer at it. And the other competitive platforms aren't really that interested in having a full Xbox experience on their hardware. But for us, we want to be where games want to be, where gamers want to be rather, and that's the path we're on. Uh, Microsoft has already ventured onto its competitors' platforms a number of times in the past, most notably with multi-platform releases of Minecraft and Switch releases of Cuphead and Ori and the Blind Force. The PS4 and Switch versions of Minecraft also give players the option to use their Microsoft accounts to allow cross-platform play and adding friends through their Xbox gamer tags. All right, so... We had a big debate about this on the Broadband Bully Show, one of the Broadband Bully Shows that we did last night, all right? So, the question was posed, well, did he mean, did he explicitly say it? No, he would never explicitly say, I was trying to put my stuff on PlayStation and Yoshida told me to kick rocks. They would never do that. This is called business babble. They're not 110% transparent. None of them is. That, your favorite company, my favorite company, none of them are. They have to be flexible for business purposes, and that's smart business. So I, I can't fault him for how he said this because if he would have just straight out said, hey, I'm going to come out and I tried to put my stuff on other platforms and they told me to go away, that saying it like that devalues his platform because they're going to say, whoa, why wouldn't you want Xbox on your on your console unless they feel like it's not worth it. <coughs> Excuse me. Because we know that Xbox would love to have PlayStation on there in some fish shape form or fashion, right? If PlayStation was willing to do that. 
So here's what people need to realize. First and foremost, Phil Spencer talks out of order. I've said this before. I've said this. I even said this, I've said this for years. He talks out of order. That's his biggest flaw. He's he's real big minded as far as some of the things that he likes to do, and that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. But he has to have the proper guardrails, and it just concerns me that someone that's that high up at that level lacks those guardrails when it comes to communicating these ideas. And as a as a tech company, Xbox is going to try a lot of stuff. Google's going to try a lot of stuff. Amazon's going to try a lot of stuff. But you don't talk about things too early that are in flight. Let me give you another example of where just Phil Spencer is just all over the place. Let's take a look at this. If I can go back here. All right. This is a tweet that I had sent somebody that was arguing with me about, you know, Phil Spencer being on message. And I said, look, you got to understand. He... He, he he plants a flag at a specific point firmly like that's where he's going to stay and he and, and with and at the blink of an eye he goes somewhere else and he has to learn to hold on to that flag a little bit longer because it, it goes that's part of the mind share a big part rather of the mind share problem that they have let me give you an example 2014 Frame rate is important because we can bang with Sony on RAS. 2017, visuals over frame is what people care about because they can stick uh, the consistent 60 frames per second. And in 2020, he basically says frames over everything again. You know, frames is, is the biggest thing. And, I, and I'm paraphrasing here, but here goes an example. Here goes this 2014 quote. Frame rate to me is significantly more important to gameplay than resolution in the mix of those two, which brings the right st art style of freedom. So he's talking about frames is bigger than, than than resolution because they didn't have the resolution on their side. Then um, he's sitting down with a publication, and the publication is asking him about uh, frame rates and how come they're not hitting them consistency. And Phil Spencer says, "Well, I, I get your concern about frame rates." And he laughs. He says, "Why do you care so much about frames?" Huh? You just said in 2014 it's important. 2017, you're asking why. And the guy's going back and forth with Phil. And then by the end of it, he makes the argument, well, visuals affect gameplay too. Like, you know what I'm saying? But before, frames were more important to gameplay than visuals, right? Right. But now in 2020, when he sat with Survivor, Spencer says that he and the Xbox team are, va are valuing higher, more consistent frame rates over just throwing more pixels up on the, on the screen. So 2020, it's, it's like he goes through this metamorphosis every three years. 2020, you dog just simply focusing on visuals. When in 2017, visuals should no visuals can't be ignored and visuals are important why are you so worried about frames we're in 2014 it's all about the frames look here's the thing man if i had to point my finger at the biggest flaw for xbox it's phil spencer don't get me wrong there's a lot of xbox hating media out there i do not deny it i do not deny it. i know y'all say i'm part of it but no i'm just a very tough critic <laughs> my stadium brethren know that too i'm a very tough critic and we got to be honest here y'all xbox gamers y'all just ultra sensitive like everywhere else i go and i'm critical of their platform just as much if not more they don't react the way this they you know you guys do and I've been gaming on Xbox since the beginning of the platform, the frag parties, all that stuff. So I, I've seen the metamorphosis and I'm telling you. What I'm also telling you is that don't be that sensitive. Phil needs to shut his mouth. That's what it is. Now, because here's why. At the end of the day, let's not let's not overshoot the moon. We got we if I if I'm an Xbox enthusiast, I'm saying to myself, we need to focus on the July showcase and all that other noise needs to be blocked out. And in that July showcase, the most important thing that has to shine seriously bright is Halo. <clears throat> if they can come through that show and Halo looks fantastic and Halo, may, if everybody watches that show and they're like, oh my God, I want to get Halo. Then that's a win for Xbox. Why? 
because people will be able to get Halo, which is going to be an ongoing game. It's already been announced. People are going to be able to get Halo via Xbox Game Pass. And that's where Xbox wants, really wants everybody to go. They want everybody to go to Game Pass. They'll give you options, but they rather you go to Game Pass. That's why we're seeing some tweaking of the Xbox Live annual subscription options and all that other stuff. They want you to go to Game Pass, and I get it. And if they can get the vast majority of their consumer base on Game Pass, then they're good to go. So, well, what if I'm an Xbox enthusiast, my mind state is Phil needs to shut up until he gets in the show. Don't do no more interviews. Phil is our worst enemy when he opens his mouth. He talks about things in flight too much. We need Shayla, We need Halo to shine. If Halo shines, we're in good. Because that's going to make everybody say, regardless if I'm getting a PlayStation, if I'm getting a, a Switch, me with Stadia, hey, I want to get I want to get Game Pass too. Game Pass ain't got to be your tell-all be-all. I can enjoy PlayStation and still have Game Pass on the side too. You see what I'm saying? So that's what Xbox predominantly wants is want everybody to say Game Pass is worth the investment and I want to get it mainly or I want to get it also with my main way to game. And so let's have everybody focus on that. And in the meantime, hold Phil's feet to the fire. He damages the product when he opens his mouth. Y'all may like it, but it sends too many mixed signals to people outside of your bubble and you need people outside of your bubble. So Phil needs to shut up. I can't, I'm not going to put it, I'm not going to sugarcoat it or be sweet about it. He needs to shut up. He needs to shut up. And the only thing coming out of Phil's mouth right now should be about Halo, Halo, Halo. Then after the showcase, when Halo does well, there's drop little driplets here and there. Watch them grow. Don't speak out of order. And then you cha-ching. And then everybody got everybody playing with everybody on Game Pass. And then it's a, it's a success story for Xbox. But Phil has to shut up. And y'all got y'all can't be so sensitive about hearing that. And y'all gotta put his feet to the fire. Because stuff like this doesn't help. Just needs to shut up. And if he does that, and if Halo does well, I know I sound like a broken record, but if Halo does well, man, sky's the limit for Xbox. Period. And that's it from your boy MM2K. Let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Cause like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the broadband bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, the Stadia Dosage. And with all that said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Be ready for that Xbox showcase. Peace.